from deep in the wilds of Pittsfield Township, Michigan. It's the Grace and Paul Potscast. She's a left-wing conservative Catholic homeschooler who loves to garden. He's a bearded computer geek who reads and writes like he's running out of time. Together, they're raising an ever-growing army of adorable children and planning the revolution. She's been doing the yeah, sound my, effects. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All righty. So welcome to the show, Angie. It's good to have you here. Thank so, you for having me. Oh, yeah. No, this is, it's, it's our pleasure. We've been burning and hoping to talk to some millennials. This is like our project for the year. Yeah. Is yeah. to talk to millennials and see what's going on for them, what's happening in their lives. This and is our theme, our theme for the year. Yeah. It's millennial economics. Because we started thinking, oh, well, this could help millennials and that could help millennials. And then I started thinking, you know, we should ask them what's going on before we start figuring out like what would help. Yeah, because I'm old, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm yeah. a Gen Xer. I'm 50. And yeah. Grace yeah. is a, f- a few years younger, but she, I think, is still technically in Gen X. I'm still Gen X, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we yeah. really, and you know, I'm, I won't say we really feel economically secure, but things were different when I was starting out and I'm more established in a career than a lot of younger people are. Things were sure, very sure. different. Yeah. 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 Um, so. yeah. And just to set some context, I was in my 20s in the 90s Yep. when mm. a number of millennials were born. And yep. I routinely worked temp jobs for a month and then took three months off because I'd earned enough money. That's... Wow. Yeah, I never could do that. That but, was like uh, a norm. Yeah, but you had housemates, mm-hmm. you, and you lived with relatives and whatnot. I, I had various support structures. Yeah, but that was just like it. I, I didn't find a job that I really wanted. I dropped out of grad school. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I was doing my thing. I have never felt like there was a time where I couldn't, where I felt that I couldn't work full time. Mm-hmm. I I have felt mm-hmm. uh, there have been a couple times where like I lost a job. And felt like I did have enough saved where I didn't, I felt like I could take at least a week or two breathing space before I rushed out to the unemployment office. But that was just once. (laughs) (laughs) That was at one time. And then, yeah, Yeah. but mostly it's been like you lose a job and suddenly you're in free fall and everything's ramped up to 11. You're desperate. Yeah. Anyway, let's, we jumped right in. Let's, um, let's say what we're doing this week and who our guest is. And I think uh, I introduced her. Yep. And then I framed like what, our like thing is with the millennials. So we're skipping over this week. We're going to skip over our usual walk a week and what we're reading and what we've been uh, watching and all that stuff. Yeah. And we're going to just uh, get right to it, get right to it because we're, we're a little squeezed for time. And also we didn't prepare very well. <laughs> I've been joking that the dog ate our homework. <laughs> The kids ate our homework. <laughs> yeah. The kids well, ate our free time. This I think week. you should actually just write that into a script and read it along with the intro. The do- yeah, the dog ate our homework. homework. Here we are. Um, <laughs> but so the question we're asking, and um, I'll leave it to you, Angie, to take it where you need to go, is so how's the economy mm-hmm. treating you lately? Um, I think pretty decent for what I know of my other friends. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't go the college route when I, oh. I got married at, I got married at 19. Um, mm-hmm. and I start working a, um, a manual labor job, I guess you would call it. It's, I uh, did assembly line work. Mm-hmm. I made really good money. I made 1653 an hour. Um, mm-hmm. and a bunch of my friends went the college route and got out and didn't have a job and were barely making $10 an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and I had already bought a house with my husband and got a mortgage, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that, uh, we are on the, uh, fear, the fair end of it. Um, mm-hmm. so that's why I had mentioned to you before is, you know, I feel like a lot of my generation bought into the college. I want to call it college scam that mm-hmm. led a lot of my generation into debt. Mm -hmm. And they were promised jobs and they thought they were going to go out and make, you know, six figure sums doing computer work. And unfortunately, there's not much computer work. There's not much um, engineering work. It's just it's not much of a field anymore. I mean, it's like it's overwhelmed and they get mad at the baby boomers and the Generation Xers that are still working it. 
but hey. unfortunately they can't really afford <laughs> to retire, you know, because yeah, yeah. it's just, it, it's just, it's just the sense of the economy right now. It's it's messing with everyone, whether mm. you're a millennial, whether you're a Generation Xer. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I do sympathize with a lot of people of my generation, but I also am a little ticked with them because I <laughs> wish that they would go and get trade jobs because that's where the money is. That's where we need people. They're so desperate for people right now. They're willing to pay for your certification and your training to go to school so they can have you. And then you could easily make 30 to 40 an hour, depending on what you do. Mm -hmm. This is the type of stuff that drives me nuts. I'm just like, and that's why we are doing well. My husband and I are doing well because my husband's a trades. He's blue collar. Mm -hmm. He does HVAC. HVAC. Okay. And then when did you start working assembly work? Was that like recently? Yeah. As soon as I, like, no, I, I worked as, you know, like 19, I got a job. Okay. And I worked there for seven years and then I, now I'm a stay at home mom Okay, because we can afford for me to stay at home. You mm-hmm. know, it's tight. We have mm-hmm. to budget really carefully. We have to be mindful of what we spend. We can't go on vacations and live lavishly, but we're happy and content. We have four kids. We mm-hmm. have a nice home. We are able to afford all of our bills every, every month. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have a little bit of debt, you know, about 8,000, but it's nothing awful. Mm-hmm. I know some of my friends that's, are like that's a tiny amount of debt compared yeah, to most it's a millennials. Tiny I know. And, mm-hmm. and I know some of my friends are 20, 30, 50, $60,000 worth of, in debt. And that's, mm. that's awful. And yeah. a lot of it came yeah. from their student loans. It's an awful of coming feeling. out of college. Mm-hmm. It is. It is an awful feeling. I feel so like I do people really were, feel my, pe- we still, we're still pushing people to go to school to for school. STEM. And I work yes. in STEM, and I, I I have a sense for you know, not everyone is either good at or should be good at STEM, and there right. actually, as you say, there aren't that many positions like waiting, waiting, yep. and we're right. pushing people saying you know if you just in, in, you know take out a hundred thousand dollars in student loans or or more in some cases, and you know get a EE job or some kind of you know, then you'll have some good work waiting for you. But the the companies that I know of that that do hire EEs and hire software people and whatnot, mm-hmm. they're looking for extremely experienced people. They're not looking for anybody yes. for green. Either that, or they are like a a Ford or something like that, and they're hiring H one Bs because they can uh, can pay a lot less to those folks, yeah. and they can even put them up. They'll even house. They'll pay for their housing, and it's still less expensive mm-hmm. than uh, and hiring yeah. recent college grads than hiring here. recent grads here. Right. So it's just yeah. the whole thing is, is is largely, as you say, a scam to generate student loans for a lot of schools. Right. Well, yeah. no, and it really and it is, fe- and I. Oh, I was to say, it really feels like Lucy with the football. Right. You know, come right. on. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The job will be there this time. Come on. Yeah. Come yeah. on. A little closer. Yeah. No. Nope. Now, I, no, I don't regret. And, it, and it's all a lie. I don't regret going to college, but I didn't go into college thinking that I was training for a career exactly. You know, right? Yes. I was a, a an English major, and I was well, I was going to be a computer science major. I studied computer science, but I was well supported by scholarships too. So, and I would mm-hmm. not have gone. My family would not have sent me if it had been all mm-hmm. loans and debt. So, I mean, I did have a little debt. I graduated with. In 1989, I graduated with only $3,600 in debt Mm -hmm. in student Mm -hmm. loans. My parents paid for a portion of my tuition, uh, but Mm -hmm. it wasn't that much. Like by the by the by my last year, you know, they had paid down. Their income was not high. They had paid down into it so much that you know the the rest of it was made up. They every year they made up more. Mm-hmm. And so, like my senior year, they were only paying a couple of grand, right. which I didn't feel like was that onerous, you know. And then I only took out loans for a couple of grand, so my student loans were paid off in a few years. And thirty six hundred wasn't a huge, a huge burden. Amount. No, no. I, yeah. And you mentioned blue collar work. Yeah. And yes. And how um, remunerative it is, and that it's it's good work, it's honest work, and you get paid well. We know from trying to hire a plumber for our house yes, and saying and how much the plumber can charge. Mm-hmm. And we're kind of going, wow, that's, that's, that's got to be work. good money. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. So 
But I think that's a really relevant point because it brings up class. Mm -hmm. That class is an issue and people don't want blue collar jobs because it suggests something about their class. And they're embarrassed to take the work or they're ashamed of the work or something. I don't want to put too many words in people's mouths. But but I see it in in their reaction to the idea that, hey, maybe your kid could become a blue collar worker and have, you know, a trade job. Very few people are comfortable with that idea. They're even uncomfortable with the idea that their children might go to community college. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Like that's an offensive idea. Um, And and frankly... My own back, my own background. I, I, my parents paid for college, and then mm-hmm. um, I had scholarships. You went to a state school, and I went to state school because, mm. which was a reasons. pretty good. It was a pretty good state school. It was, it yeah. was, but um, and then I went to grad school. I had you know a fellowship and various things like that. And here's sort of a dirty little secret. Yeah. Um, the good graduate programs don't cost you any money. Oh, yeah. People don't realize <laughs> that you shouldn't be a graduate student if you have to pay to be a graduate like student. Like, if you have to pay, that you're, it's something, a scam. Something's not working right for you. Like, yeah. something's not but, happening. But an awful lot of people do. You know? A lot of people. And, yes. Now, there's now again, there's something slightly different if it's a professional program, like, say, medicine. Yeah. yeah. People pay to go to medical school. People pay for... But again, you're getting... It's a trade that has a different class marker. So you're getting a, yeah. Yeah, you're getting yeah. educated in a trade. And you generally have to pay to be educated in a trade. But again, like trade jobs right now, where there's a dearth of um, um, trained employees, yeah. if you play your cards right, you get paid for that too. For people looking who like medicine, I, I would seriously be considering, you know, rather than, you know, medical school i'd be considering like a med tech like an anesthesiology or, a, or any of those things a, right. a radiology or you know some of these these med tech positions that don't require nearly as much training but are, there's still a lot of demand very for well these paid jobs and very well, yeah, yeah very high demand yep. or although, nurse nursing too although that's there's pretty, not enough money to pay me to be an anesthesiologist there just isn't it, it's no. pretty yeah. high stress job. it's a very high stress job oh my god that is yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like hurry but, up and heart attack right but <laughs> But there are a lot, you know, phlebotomy. If you don't, that's good too. Aren't grossed out by the sight of people's right. blood. Not as well paying, right? But, but, but yeah, there's there's a lot of yeah. med tech kind of. Well, jobs. and also there used to be um, a path, starting in high school, bringing you from some very entry level medical work, and then uh, you see it in the nursing profession where you've got like you know certified nurse practitioners or CNA certified nurse assistants, and then it moves up. And each level is basically like one year of schooling till you get mm-hmm. a bachelor's in nursing or mm-hmm. a master's degree in nursing. And the very nice thing is that you get to work while, while you're you, doing that. While you're doing that and moving up and moving forward. So yeah. you can start that path in high school, or you used to. Right. And I'm admit we, we to, don't, we don't know to not being very clear on this path currently. But it used to be that you could start in high school and so you were never behind the eight ball paying for your training. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. frequently, and they took that. It seemed, it seemed like they took that away. Yes, with my generation, like I didn't have shop in school. No, nope. mm-hmm. they took away shop. No, nope. I, I didn't have I automotive. <laughs> no automotive. Uh, what about home ec? Home ec. Home ec. No, nope. home ec was gone. I had. That's... We had no type of learning life skills. They didn't even teach us how to budget, yeah. balance checkbooks. And my economy class was a joke. We watched movies most of the time. It was. It, they really did. You know, our our education system really did fail a lot of us. I don't. I can't speak for all of us. I can just tell you from my own personal. Right. Um, when I moved out and I had to learn how to budget, thank goodness I I married a man that was nine years older than me because that could teach me. You know, because my parents didn't think it was something that they needed to teach me because they learned it in school. Mm. You know, and that's yeah. oh, right, you know, right. and my mom went to a a vocational school. She learned a trade. My dad learned a trade. They mm-hmm. got hired on here in 19, then the 19, in the nineties and eighties mm-hmm. when the, the computer business was just starting to come up. Mm-hmm. My parents learned on the job training. Why doesn't that happen? A, a lot anymore? of, Why does a lot of places have, have to come in with five yeah. years of experience out the door. If you right. want to learn. Yeah. So just now, like recently, if you want to learn soldering skills, say, mm-hmm. and my company, for example, yeah. hires people who can do assembly work like a technical mm-hmm. assembly with fiber optics and soldering. Um, what I will look for 
is I'll go get online and look for a video that was produced by Hewlett Packard in the 80s because mm-hmm. Hewlett Packard in the 80s building machines, you know, mm-hmm. they used to hire people with high school diplomas and train them. Yep. They would train them yep. up in all their soldering skills. And if right. you went through that Almost program, you became really good at this stuff. So yeah. this begs the question, at least for me, it just, I got to know. Why? why? Why do we think this is happening? Why we, uh, seriously. Because I, I think it's because um, the colleges and the uh, smelt money mm-hmm. and they wanted to therefore force everybody to go to college. Like it was like it became this thing that you have to do. Mm-hmm. And they got rid of the vocational. They got rid of the trade schools. And now you have all these kids that are like, oh, I got to go to college. I have to have a degree. Because like right. I was looking myself just for secretary work. Mm-hmm. I need yeah. a four-year degree yeah. to do a secretary job. Are you kidding me right yeah. now? No, it's like everything serious. needs a degree. And yep. it's really frustrating. It's really annoying because a lot of these jobs, you can come in, be learned and trained. As long as you're a decent human being that actually works hard and, and tries to wake up in the morning, Show up. <laughs> I think you should be able to get half of these jobs. I don't know why you needed a degree. And I think that's where a lot of the frustration for millennials that, comes from. That at degree least for inflation, me. right? That I kind think of degree inflation. Yeah. There has been degree inflation at the same time that like there's been degree deflation. So like, you know, yeah. I, I, w- I, I taught a college class at um, Saginaw Valley State University. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was pretty horrified by the skill level of the students. This was an upper level class. And Mm -hmm. I believe now that basically, essentially college like this has become the new high school. You you talked about how Mm -hmm. high schools don't teach these basic skills anymore. I'm not sure what they teach anymore because it it seemed like we had college (laughs) students in an upper level computer engine, you know, computer information science program who couldn't add, subtract, multiply, and divide, you know, who, who yeah. lacked oh, these yeah. really fundamental skills. And it was a little bit of a shock. I mean, I'd heard about this, but to see it in, you know, in yeah. classes was, was kind of a shock. So there has been this, this like college has become the new high school. Uh, and, well, and instead yeah, of having, having a diploma as your basic entry level bar, you have to jump over to, to get into the working world in some way. Now, it's a now they degree. want a bachelor's degree. And this is what's really perverse. Yeah. So like, remember the first year we moved to Saginaw, our, our um, homeschooled high schooler was hired to tutor a recent, a recent college oh, graduate. Yeah. yeah. This is an, this is another reason why I kid you not. Grace and I uh, homeschool. Yeah, is because yeah. it just seems like we can teach our kids and like, even dude, I can do even casually teaching them, and they wind up way ahead of their peers yeah. in the, the school. And system. that's why we don't do public schools at all. We do a, a homeschool based. Uh, charter school. They actually use homeschool curriculum. Uh-huh. We were lucky to get into it. It's a classical education. Mm-hmm. It's based on Socratic method because I know that my kids, I, I just don't trust the public schools anymore to teach kids what they need to know. And I can tell you my, my two younger brothers who are 19 and almost 18 mm-hmm. and they go to this school. My younger brother is doing college courses right now and going to a vocational school, which the school is paying for. Hmm. So he's going to have a job. He's going to have a job doing electrician electrician work Mm -hmm. as an apprentice, Mm -hmm. making 18 an hour. So there is a a swing coming Mm -hmm. back the other direction where they're like, yeah, "Yeah, college is a scam. Like this is really what the generation behind the millennials are now seeing. Mm. Oh yeah, if we go to college, we're going to be in huge debt and we're not going to have a job. So I feel like that whole entire, like, I need to have a prestigious job Mm -hmm. uh, is kind of going away. And it's just like, no, this is where the money's at. Money is at these train jobs. These train jobs. And I I hope that, um, that this, some of the prestige is falling away or like the, the Mm -hmm. air of prestige and some of that class bias is moving to the side because I can tell you a lot of my yeah, a lot yeah. of my peers would never have done any vocational training. It, like shop was yeah. the only thing they did. It was interesting in in mm-hmm. high school. I, you know, I was like I just taking you know the the higher level English and physics and chemistry and mm-hmm. and all this. I was in like the the upper level track, you right. know. But at the mm-hmm. same time, they had. Um, 
they had uh, electives. I took electives in wood shop, metal mm-hmm. shop, and home ec. Yeah. And mm-hmm. um, so, so I, also, I. I also took an elective typing class because mm-hmm. that was like something, there's a class thing there. It was assumed, you know, I think I was the only boy in the class, you know, or, or maybe mm-hmm. one, of, one out of two boys because right. the assumption was, People took it. I mean, it was this was on selectric typewriters that typed on paper. You know, it mm-hmm. was right. it was old school. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I, the assumption mm-hmm. was that you would take this stuff and you would learn to type business letters and papers and documents and how to format footnotes. You know, by hand, because you were mm-hmm. you would go into a secretarial right. type type of work. Right. Exactly. It's, exactly. Right. Training girls for the workforce. But basically. it was really useful for me because I liked to write and also I was doing computer programming. And so to this day I can like type code far faster (laughs) than most programmers that I know, you know, and, and it's, so it's, (laughs) it's been an incredibly useful skill and also the, the wood and metal shop. And there was a huge class difference there. Like I was sort of, of two classes, you know, Mm -hmm. living among working class people, but sort of fallen economically from a family that had been upper upper middle class you mm-hmm. know but um so it was it was a little confusing i didn't quite know who i fit in with but i really did like to use my hands to learn how to craft to things and build yeah. things that was great and those skills you know the, people don't they don't don't get they know, don't get them anymore at all uh, unless and, and someone a, in their family gives them the right. skill and like exactly. we're talking about really basic woodworking right you know yeah, sanding yes. and using a saw and stuff like that not fine carpentry and you yeah know. um well i feel like a lot of the, uh, the a lot of the hands-on stuff and a lot of the um you know shop and anything like that teaches you problem solving and critical thinking sure yeah, yeah. and Very i feel so. like that a lot of our generation has lost that and i i really I struggle. I, I know I struggled at the beginning going out into the the real world. We'll just mm-hmm. call it that mm-hmm. because I felt like my parents did a really good job, I have to say, mm-hmm. but I still felt like I was very unequipped to handle day-to-day problem solving mm-hmm. and basic um, mm-hmm. yeah. knowledge. I felt like a little kid walking out into an adult world. It was very um, overwhelming. And I know I'm not the only one that feels that way. Mm-hmm. And I know that a lot of my generation is still trying to catch up mm-hmm. and and trying to figure out how to do it. I mean, everybody laughs, but there's YouTube videos on like how to, you know, screw in a light bulb or, you know, <laughs> you know, like how to do basic repairs around the house yeah, yeah. because Iron we weren't what? taught it in school. Yeah. Our schools didn't teach us how to do basic life skills. I think that right. they figured our families were just going to teach us. But unfortunately, a lot of our right. parents right. both have either yeah. we're in a divorced family yeah. or yeah. Our, both of our parents are working. They don't have time. Yeah, yeah, I was a latchkey kid and raised by a single mom. And so, no, I didn't. While, when I was young, I didn't get a lot of like, here's how you do things with your hands from, you know, right. a father or grandfather figure. So Right. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's hard. That's very that's hard. hard. And there's no yeah. replacing that. No. Exactly. Not you really. Know? I mean, you can learn some of these things later, but like the confidence of being able to do things with your hands comes from being a young person and doing things with your hands successfully. Yeah, you that's know? where it comes yep. from. Um, and, uh, just uh, not, not that I want to beat this dead horse, oh, but I see there's, there's, there's this thing with the class issue where, I don't know if you know about this, Angie, but what I've seen so much now with all the vocational mm-hmm. training in all the school districts that I'm familiar with, mm-hmm. you know, it's maybe half a dozen, um, the vocational training is only available to kids in the bad schools what would have been called yep. reform mm-hmm. school mm-hmm. maybe 30 yep. years, 40 years ago so like if you get kicked out of regular school you're expelled you can't come back and now maybe you've got some kind of learning disability and the state has to educate you they've got a special school yeah that they have some name the like, <laughs> it's like we usually call it like some yeah. al- an alternative school right like they don't call yeah. it like for it's not juvenile delinquents or some any Naughty name, but it might as well be. It might as well be. Yeah, yeah. So all the kids who got kicked out and are now in reform school, they teach them vocational classes. Well, <laughs> so basically, I, I find that so sad. That's so sad. I mean, not that they shouldn't have vocational classes, right? No, no. they should. But everyone should. <laughs> Even in the eighties, yes, that was exactly. the population of like my shop class 
largely were the kids who were juvenile, you know, in juvenile delinquents or had some or kind had of some issue, c- troubles. right? Yeah. And then, um, but the idea is you don't want to end up in those classes with yep. all the reject kids, do you? Right? <laughs> Yeah, that's they the were, implication. They were, they were more fun, honestly. <laughs> and what, <laughs> right? And what are you even saying about the skilled trades when that's the dynamic you set up for skilled trades? Right. That the only place to get them and the only way to have access to them in the public system is if you get kicked out. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. That's so bizarre and absurd. I I can't. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. And and that's where I'm at too, because you know I that's what infuriates me. Mm -hmm. You know, is that there is not really many vocational schools anymore. They're very few and far between. Trust me, I'm looking in Colorado right now because I'm just like, you know what? You know, with the kids getting older and them getting to school, I'd like to go learn a trade myself. Mm -hmm. You know, if anything happened to my husband, I'd like to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, it's few and far between. (laughs) I'm having a hard time finding something. And and I find it disappointing. Are are there any like women's women in trades groups in Colorado? There are several in Michigan. So that's why I'm, why I'm asking. Um, Because usually they will grab you and take you by the hand. Because just like there are very few people in the trades, there are almost no women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So any place where there's an active um, um, women's group, see what you can find. I'll I'll dig a little bit and see if I can't find something for you. Yeah, I'm having um, trouble finding something because I'd like to go learn, you know, either electrician work or, you know, something along those lines, because I, I can process pretty well with my hands. Mm-hmm. I'm very much a, a, you know, a hands on learner. I can learn pretty fast and process stuff. Mm-hmm. And I know that my gener I, I hate that everybody thinks that my generation is stupid. And I don't think I don't think that about them at all. Mm-hmm. I just think that they weren't properly equipped. Yeah. And, yeah. and right. given a, a clear picture. I think that they were told all these fantasy tales of what their life was going to be like if they went to college, they're going to have a job. Mm-hmm. And I don't blame them. I really right. don't. Right. But you eventually we need to stop blaming everybody. You have to take personal responsibility for yourself mm-hmm. and and choose a path that's going to help you to get where you want to go. And it right. may not be your desired career, may but you know, pretty. right. It might not be pretty, but if you can afford a nice home and afford the things that you want to be able to afford, go on vacations or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know what? If it means rolling up your sleeves and fixing someone's plumbing, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing embarrassing about doing that. And I feel like that's where we're at. We just can't. It's just not what we thought it was going to be. We're not going to all be able to sit on our couches and develop video <laughs> games or test video games. I'm sorry. It's just, yeah, yeah. that doesn't happen. We're not going to become a Facebook developer. You know, everything yeah. that pretty much has yeah. been developed is developed. We're not yeah. going to become all the YouTube stars. And the reality is we need trade jobs. And it's not, yeah, I, yeah. I really hope that the, um, that the idea that if you're a trades person that you failed, that you're a failure, that you're, that you're a degenerate. Or just That's second why you're class. Working that job. Just second, just second class. class. Yeah. I wish that would go away because it's not true. Some of the most wonderful people I've ever met, and I know a lot of trades people because my husband's one, mm-hmm. and they're brilliant. They are intelligent, amazing people that will just blow you out of the water. Mm-hmm. But they're so down to earth and they run at a different speed of life. Mm-hmm. They, they are not as stressed out as white collar people. Uh, my yeah, dad's a white yeah. collar and it's a stress. Well, you have to be constantly competitive, fighting, trying to get atop of everything. There's so much politics, but blue collar, it's, it's a slower way of life. You just go yeah. and you do your job and you come home, you open up a beer and you hang out with your friends, barbecue in the backyard. There's a lot I mean, to be said for being able to actually leave, leave your, your job way. when you go home. Yeah. I had a friend who worked for a few years. Uh, he did compositing at a newspaper. And mm-hmm. This was before it was all computerized. It involved a lot of hand cutting out pieces and you know lining them up, like laid out the classifieds mm-hmm. right. and stuff like that. Yep. And um, mm-hmm. it was a it was a hard job. He had to stay late. You know, it was stressful at, while he was in there, the moment. right? In the yeah. moment. But the the thing that he liked about it and used to tell me was when he was done and they put, sent the paper off. If there was something screwed up with this week's, you know 
addition or what there was absolutely nothing he could do about it at this point <laughs> it's done so exactly. it was done and he could just it was <laughs> done you know no yeah. fixing it so then he yeah. didn't have to think about it right. like, i know away. white collar people don't get that luxury you guys email you got to come home you got business me- well, you like my dad yeah. never shuts off he's always working I mean, even when we went on vacations, he was always taking business calls. There was never yeah, a yeah. break, and that and he he worked blue he worked blue collar before he went to white collar. He's like, man, I wish <laughs> there's some days I wish I would have just stayed as an electrician because I, it's exhausting. I'm yeah. not a manager, but the a lot of times the projects that I'm doing are are with me all the time. You know, mm-hmm. and I, yeah. I very often work more than forty hours, and then I am thinking a lot. I, I do solve programming problems in the shower at home sometimes. Yeah. You know? I'd say it's with exhausting. fair frequency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your brain's always yeah. working. Yeah. Now, so I guess it just depends on what type of life you want oh, as yeah, a person. Yeah. yeah. And then, I don't know, the work you're suited for? Because it's hard for me to imagine you doing other work. Like what that would even I, look like? Some, yeah? I was always very obsessive, compulsive, and detail-oriented You know, as a small yeah. child. So whatever I went into, it was going to involve... It probably would have involved electronics or detail work. It's it's so you're talking about you're right about like yeah not everyone can be a game developer and people think that like video game tester is a position they can you know go up the ranks in or something and that's not even true. That's not a thing. Developers yeah. are that that work is brutal and it's highly yeah. competitive, highly highly yes. competitive. Now, yes. what I've sort of carved out a niche, I, I've been a web developer. I've been, you know, I used to work on, I was part of the dot-com boom and all that. I've been sort mm-hmm. of a research programmer and all that. But about um, about 15 years yeah, ago or so, 15. I started getting into uh, what I would call is really low-level programming. So in other words, rather than like, you know, the stuff you download from Microsoft, it's like more like the software that runs on your refrigerator or in your car mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, or in so there, there is work there actually, and pe- yeah. yes, people who is. know how to do it. There's like it's kind of like an iceberg. Like people are familiar with like the apps on their phone and all that, but they're yep. not so familiar with like the code in their toaster. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and there's their a toaster it, has code, and there's a ton. When like, did are that there? Happen? Yeah, like a car radio has uh, may have a million lines of code in it. You know, and someone gets sound, paid to write. You sound that. like my dad right now. <laughs> or do it? Okay. Well, that's been that's yeah. been an area that I've kind of like have been able to specialize in. And oh, that's awesome. when when you get good at that, right? You can mm-hmm. in this area you can find work. Mm-hmm. Um, in the Saginaw area, I was not able to find work except f- when I lost my work from home job, except for some like contract testing and stuff, which was really kind of brutal. Uh, you yeah. Know. But, it's um, trenches. but th- which is why we're back here, yeah. which is right. why we're back yeah. in the Ann Arbor area. Cause now I'm building these, uh, these, uh, devices with you know, these optical electronic devices that have custom code in them. So th- that's oh, cool. Good. But well, this is what I'm cool. wondering, though. Do you do you feel like you have long term security, though, Angie? Like um, you and your family. As of right now, no. The retirement is just a lot of it's Just we don't have life insurance. We don't have anything for retirement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we have a little bit saved away, but mm-hmm. it's pretty much we're living paycheck to paycheck. But we're able to make from paycheck to paycheck. And I know a lot of it. I, I know what the problem is Yeah, and I know how we can fix it. And that's why we're in the process of, you know, looking at moving somewhere where it's lower cost mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, um, getting off of credit card and onto cash, mm-hmm. which is a lot of my generation's problem is yeah. that they all use credit card and don't use cash. So they mm-hmm. don't see the money that they're spending and um impulse buys i mean ooh, impulse buys they love getting us on impulse buys and oh, yeah. that is <laughs> not just your generation that, yeah <laughs> well you were, you were talking about not not um necessarily being able to navigate stuff and defend yourself i think i feel like finances the financial world now is so yep. predatory Yes. That people do yes. not understand what they're getting into. Like when oh, they yeah. when they rates, t- yeah. when they take out a credit card or they get a payday loan or all this, they yeah. do not understand yeah. just how and they make it, you know, very, very difficult 
Uh, it's, yeah. And it's similar with student loans, the way yeah. student loans are structured now. Oh, they yeah. do not understand oh, yeah. just how screwed they are once they have once they signed sign on the dotted line. line. Yes. Yeah. 15% right. interest rate, though, that's not bad. Oh, no, that's bad. That's yeah. bad. <laughs> that's real bad. Yeah. It's only going to really get bad. worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I, luckily, I have a husband that was able to explain it to me, and we have a low interest rate on our credit card, which I think is yeah. like 6.43 or something, which is really great. Well, that's better, and than, our, that's better than ours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not bad. And our home loan is you know we have an interest rate of 3.24 or 3.34 or something and we are just able to because we hit at the exact moment when you know the market crash the recession happened and we bought then that was a perfect time to buy so we found somebody Mm -hmm. that was able to Mm -hmm. you know take a risk on us because we're first-time buyers but my husband had great credit because he constantly bought you know smaller cars with lower loans and paid them off immediately through his bank so mm-hmm. his bank, he had a great track record with them. So right. these are things that he knew to do that I wouldn't have known to do. And it was just and just a nine-year period, mm-hmm. just a nine-year right. difference between life, him and I. Life experience. Right, yeah. right. But he knew all of this, and he was running his own business and all of this crazy stuff. I'm just like, yeah. I looked at him just like, what Dude, do I really? do? I don't know what to do. And he taught me. Mm-hmm. He taught me how to do a lot of this stuff. But a lot of my generation just gets credit cards because it's, A, it's easy to do. It's easy to do. Yeah. And- and you don't know what interest rates are because you can't do basic math, I right. feel like. Some of us are really good at math, but me, I'm just like, uh, Okay, nope. yeah. you say so. <laughs> well, now, who taught your husband? His father. His father. His father. And, and my husband was one of those types of person, people that was constantly building stuff and learning how to do stuff. And mm-hmm. he, his brain processes in ways I don't even understand. He can do large sum math in his head, and I, I don't even know. He's faster than a calculator. Mm-hmm. And- <laughs> Yeah, it's because his dad gave him these life skills. Mm-hmm. His dad owns his own business. They have to be, you know, economically aware of what's going yeah. on. They watch the trends. They figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, they have to constantly be saving and conscientious of you know what where the money goes and paying right. your overhead and and budgeting. Like Not being kids don't really know how to budget <laughs> no. or how to sit down and, and balance a checkbook. I know that that's a weird thing to say. But we still do need to balance the checkbook, checkbook, even if we don't use one. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah you know, yeah. You have yeah. to figure out what your input to your output is, and make sure that you have <laughs> enough to balance it. You're not overspending. Right. Like, can you afford a new car, or should you buy a gently used car? Or you know, or a horribly yeah, or, used car. Or a horribly used car. <laughs> or, used car. <laughs> you know. Or, or are you fast. walking to work? Are, are you, you walking gonna to work? Bike to work? Yeah. 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 What's your situation you know, for real? What's your exactly. situation? Exactly. Right. And I feel like, you know, kids are like, oh, I need to have the new latest phone and I need to have like, you know, the nicest car. And it's like a keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. you can't afford to live outside your means. But a lot of kids are trying to live outside their means. And now we have, you know, I don't want to have kids. I don't want to get married. I don't want to have any commitments. I don't want to have any extra responsibilities. Like That's why I said I'm definitely the odd man out of my generation because For I'm heaven. having kids. I've seen you know, this. Uh, there's the, There seems to be, uh, you know, I'm on uh, Reddit and, you know, Facebook and Reddit's Twitter successful. and... <laughs> Grace is yeah. saying Reddit's successful, but I try. I follow trash. what people are talking about, and I am seeing yeah. this thing among like not generation, uh, not millennials, maybe, but even even younger, right? Generation yeah. Z, or, or I don't know, people in their kids in their twenties now, teenagers, and 20 yeah. years old, who right. are are you know who are saying, oh. And like are saying, oh, I've made the decision never to have kids because I expect to be poor all my life and it would be irresponsible to have kids. Like, Full stop. Yeah. Period. And they're like, hey, I, I, I'm 22 and I got a vasectomy or something like that. I don't I don't expect ever to have kids. And I'm yeah, really I know scratching a lot of my generation have had hysterectomies. I'm just really feel like I'm never going to have kids. I'm scratching my head a little bit saying, did you give any thought to like all of your ancestors who who are the reasons that you're, you're here, here today <laughs> thousands yeah. of them i don't know it's thousands I, of them. it's just a strange i well, feel I can, it's a strange I can sum thing up for to you me. why it is yeah. if you want to know why it is sure yeah break it down so if you look back at world war ii right yeah mm-hmm. that was the worst suffering any generation had ever suffered mm-hmm. hands down mm-hmm. world war ii generation they mm-hmm. came from just coming out of the great depression and went right into world war ii and, and then you had uh, Hiroshima and Nakasawa with Pearl Harbor. It was just the bloodiest. I mean, from war to war to war to Vietnam, mm-hmm. worst generation. 
I mean, they mm-hmm. suffered so much. So those parents who were, who were about to have kids said, mm-hmm. we will never let our generations, our children suffer the way we did. We'll never let it happen oh, again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what happened is that all these parents with the next generation, which I think would have been my parents, mm-hmm. baby boomer generation, boomers, mm-hmm. they protected them from suffering, from Everything. failure, from the, from so, hurt, like from the, the darkness of, of the world. Helicopter so then, parenting. Kind it, of also, like, yes. so is this my, my favorite theme, that it's the boomer's fault? No, <laughs> See, my- I don't think it's the boomer's fault. <laughs> but I think what happened... I think what happened is that we became so afraid of suffering, having to work hard, having to strive to strive to to pull ourselves up from our bootstraps, right? Like yeah. our, mm-hmm. our mm-hmm. ancestral generation, mm-hmm. that you should be able to go to college and work a comfy job and have a white picket fence house and all of this stuff. And the reality is only a few people are going to get that that dream. And that's mm-hmm. okay. And then we look at those people and say, well, why do they have it? And I don't. Well, they worked hard for it. Th- that's where the, the mis- misstep has happened. You think that you should just be given these things. And I know everybody's going to be like, well, would they think they're entitled generation? But there is a sense of entitlement. And unfortunately, this, gen- this got worse and worse with each generation. You know, uh, you know, don't tell your kids no, you know, uh, participation well, awards, well, that everybody, the there's no failure, yeah. you know, yeah. well, through the, you weren't allowed to fail. One, one thing that, that happened after the post-war, uh, you know, period after the post-war boom is you really yeah. did have uh, an easier life. You know, we had yes, economic yeah. growth and that yep. lasted through like about 1972, 73 mm-hmm. yeah. and where people each generation really was doing economically better than their parents. Better than yeah. their parents. Oh, yeah. And, and like, oh, yeah. And they Remarkably did have, better than their yeah. parents. Yeah. And they did oh, have yeah. greater economic security. Oh, and yeah. And people oh, yeah. did. And I think it's because the parents worked so hard to provide that economic security. And also, you know, there's money in war. I'm sorry, there is. Well, and sure. Money in war. Prosper sure. from it. Sure. Right. And but th- so there was also there was also the New Deal economics behind that. Yes. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that that had a that had a huge effect through the economy. And it, we invested yeah. in our infrastructure. We invested in building out the suburbs. We invested in building out people. With the GI yep. Bill, we invested in educating people and all this going on. Uh, yep. But and it, then it went away. But it it really <laughs> did. Um, People expected, continued to expect that the the later generations would do better than they did. My From parents, previous invest- my parents yes, expected right. that I would do better than they have, and I don't have the security that they that they did. No, you know, no. and we don't. And yeah. we got, and like I have, like I said, we have to stop blaming the older generation. We have to start looking at ourselves and say, okay, what can we do? Yeah, to yeah, fix can't blame this. the boomers. Well, yeah, my parents. Last time, though, well, my parents were pre pre boomers. Well, yeah. my, so like my, my parents. My, my parents mom's were pre boomer. My dad's, I guess, technically. Uh, so the inside joke is that all of my older brothers are boomers. Your, your so I always want to blame the boomers. You're, you're actually you have such a widespread of ages in your family that some of your brothers are actually boomers. So some of my brothers are boomers, yeah. and my youngest siblings. I think my youngest sibling is actually technically a millennial. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, there's this w- so. wide, Just widespread. Just yeah. You, you get a you get a whole sorts of conversations at your dinner table. <laughs> yeah, we do. Some of us don't speak. It's good. Yeah, yeah. It's that's unfortunate, and I find it sad because we need to stop fighting each other. That's yeah. a big Gen- between problem. the we're generations. Right. Yeah, we're fighting each other. I mean, I really I, I, I do see uh, on Facebook. I have a friend who's like her hobby every day is to go rant against millennials. You know, she's ranting. my age and. Mm-hmm. And she blames everything wrong with her life, apparently, on millennials. millennials and it's right, the most right. head scratching thing. I just like why why are I'm sorry, you? I didn't I didn't do anything to her. I don't know her yeah. personally. So. <laughs> I don't know her personally, sorry. I, but I'm I'm like, exactly that's I don't know boomers personally, so how can yeah. I blame them for what yeah. the only person I'm mad at is my government, you know? But again, Amen. What can I do? <laughs> what can I do directly that's going to make them change their ways? Mm-hmm. Besides praying for them and getting up every morning and feeding my family and taking yeah. care of my life here, because that's all I can control. I can't control other people. I can't mm-hmm. control the politics. I can't control the economy. 
Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I can control my economy at home and what I do and what I spend and what I give into and what I don't give into. And you know what? Over time, when we stop spending into junk that they're trying to sell us yeah, and stop that. being wasteful with our money, they're going to listen and the economy will change and it will flip backwards if we learn to be mindful of what we do with ourselves. So when you say and, and, when you say backwards, are you talking like relocalizing? What are you, what are you talking about? Going back to so, like a more local, more traditional food production? What what, what, what do you yeah. mean? Yeah, talk to me. So yeah. like so for me, I personally think the best economy, mm-hmm. and, and people can shoot me for this. I don't care. Personally, I think the best economy you can do is try and grow your own food. Mm-hmm. Minimize yeah. your 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 cost of what you're spending, how much you know you're putting out trash wise. Um, try and lower your the impact you're making in the mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. You know, don't be wasteful of your money. Don't be wasteful of your time. Don't be wasteful of other people's time and money. So mm-hmm. you really should learn to live as much as you can dependent on yourself. You should have your own. Ecosystem, I guess, you know, that's yeah. why we're working on having mm-hmm. our own vegetable garden and mm-hmm. our own fruit garden. And mm-hmm. eventually we'll have chickens and Amen. a lot of this stuff. And I know I'm not the only one of my generation that's doing this because it's like, yeah, if the government just fell apart tomorrow, we'd be pretty screwed. And I think oh, there's a lot of yeah. people that are having that mentality that, you know, um, our money is tied up in banks. And if but- the bank system went down, we're screwed. You know, they're it's having like that this, internal dialogue, right? Yeah. We, it's right. just like you're starting to see things like, yeah, we're way too dependent on credit cards, banks, yeah. governments, government programs. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's not good. So right. seeing that and changing that and going back to, yeah, buying local, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. supporting mm-hmm. mom and pop shops, getting away from the big infrastructures, the people that are sucking the money that you're mad at. <laughs> you you have you your money has influence on yes. the market. Yeah, yeah. It does. And you right. do have that control. But you need to educate yourself. It takes work. It always <laughs> seems to me that it's um if you find that you're uh buying something that's really, really easy to buy and easy to get, you're yeah, sure. you're yeah. basically jumping into someone else's trap. You know, exactly. Whereas the, local the, honey. Thing, the things that are yeah. a little tr- little harder to get might require a little more work, might require a little yeah. more thought and research Planning and whatnot. Research, right. Those are probably yeah. the things that are actually are going to serve you. You know, yeah. right? But if it's right there, dangling, cook for yourself. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. That's a big one. That's is that, is that a thing? Yourself. Is that a thing with millennials that they never learned to cook? Uh, I never did. Okay. I mean, I learned how to bake. I can bake pants off of anybody. But, yeah. you know, I a lot of millennials know someone. how to bake. Why do they know how yeah. to bake but not to cook? I don't know. I think it's because they hung out with their moms in the kitchen. Uh, that's what my mom did. She baked. My dad was the, the one, he was the chef that cooked. My mom could, you know, I could cook basic meals. Like I, I knew how to make peanut butter and jelly and macaroni and cheese. And, you know, mm-hmm. I knew how to throw some ingredients together in an oven and bake it. I could follow a recipe. Mm-hmm. I could do that. But like, I didn't know how to meal plan and, and put together like healthy yeah, the meal planning meals, is all that's all part of the budgeting too it's really it, yeah it is it is mm-hmm. but i think that it's just easier to go out to grab like a dollar burger at mcdonald's or just go grab something out of the freezer section and throw it in the microwave you know yeah. i was talking to some kids around my generation working on the i got to talk to tons of people when i worked that job mm-hmm. and he was like i don't even know how to make macaroni and cheese i'm like really <laughs> are, you <for> real? <laughs> are you are you joking right now he's like no i really no. don't i was like Oh my gosh, that's really sad, dude. That's really is it sad. like a mystery? Like, oh, okay, that's pretty like, sad. I don't know. I because well, he's still the directions home, are on the, the box. box. I know. But, and when I like, think there's there's also this thing, right, yeah. where you buy the dollar burger, yeah, and then after a while, that's what you like. Oh yeah, yeah. and then you make so a burger. You make a oh. burger and it tastes wrong. If you grew up on McDonald's and someone serves you like a home, you know, like a a locally sourced, you know, grass-fed beef, beef burger on a brioche bun with local tomatoes and whatnot. You'd be like, "Well, oh, this mm, is gross. I don't know, it's chewy, you, you know, know. <laughs> or whatever your <laughs> issue is, right? It doesn't have much flavor. Like, that's what they'll say, because they pack it full of sugar and, and all sugar sorts of chemicals. And all these yeah. other stuff, right? Oh, like, you, you feel know, so good. This is not This is unseasoned. Like, well, uh, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. 
Your taste buds are dead. It's been destroyed by McDonald's. <laughs> Just so you know. But, but that's... People experience what they experience and you find mm-hmm. them where they are, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I wish that there was maybe a little bit, maybe a cooking class, but they, they took out home ec. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, well, that's, that's the thing. How to do stuff. That was, that's public money. And I just want to go back a little bit here because the school spending is public money. Those are my yep. tax dollars. Yeah. I yep. pay for the school system, even though I don't mm-hmm. really use it. Yep. Yep. Uh, but I have a vested interest that all those children know how to cook mm-hmm. and do things and take care of themselves. And take care of themselves. Right. I have a vested interest in that, and they, and they, they don't. Right. Because the, not, the the interest went the wrong way. So the wrong they, way somehow, right? You know, McDonald's was very keen on those those sponsorships and those donations that helped ensure right. that those kids wouldn't learn how to cook. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because. Money <laughs> makes the world go round, and, and well, they them. want to line their pockets, right? And I, this is, I don't want to just trash public school. I'd like to trash school in general, but um, <laughs> yeah, because a lot of school systems are failing unless they're somehow a, they belong to very wealthy classes, right? Mm-hmm. And even in yes. those classes, True. right? They're still um, failing. They're still they're failing still in some in some really critical ways. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, no. So yeah, I have, so I have this problem with school not actually teaching what you need to learn as a general problem, and yep. we don't quite get the matchup or the 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 deal that this is going to have long term implications if we don't teach people the basics they need to know. Right. Yeah. Right. And then yep. um, this is the other piece I wanted to go back to. So we made this huge, huge investment in the fifties. As a nation, we invested in suburban build out, the suburban build out, and the highway infrastructure to support it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, The dark secret we don't have is that there's no rational, there never was a rational plan to pay for it long term. To sustain Mm -hmm. it. Right. We never had a plan. It was not sustainable. It was a one time expense. Like we make the one time expense and then. There was no like, so we're going to plant some concrete trees so that in 50 years <laughs> we, can, we can repave all of this. We can harvest the concrete. <laughs> we can harvest. Like no one had a plan. And don't forget right. to yeah. plant more concrete more trees. More concrete trees. Yeah. So you can do it again. Yeah. The idea was that we would just keep building. Expanding. Yeah. Right. That was the only still doing it. They're still doing they're it. still doing it. No way we can pay for it. No way we no. can pay for it. Yeah. I still hear people talking about how we need to expand the highways to reduce uh, congestion. And I'm uh, like, dude, dude, can we talk? <laughs> <laughs> Take public transit. Take, Take public transit. Uh, who's gonna, well, and really, the question I have, yeah. who's going to pay for that road? Yeah. yeah. Who's well, going to pay for it? I mean, it's, it's a problem I don't worry that about I it. have Somebody now. My, yeah. seven, my uh, 15 mile commute is often a 45 minute drive. Yeah. And, yep. And, you know, and we. And here you are close to work. Yeah. We, we moved to be close to this job, and this is about as close as we could afford because mm-hmm. of the housing situation. So, yeah, it's so insane. Anyway. It's so insane. No, it's, really, it's off the rails. We really, yeah. and we called ourselves hedging our bets, buying a. <laughs> incredibly cheap house in an uh, undesirable to most, uh, desirable to us area. Mm-hmm. And um, that backfired when we couldn't keep finding telecommute work, yeah. which yeah. Yeah. you would think would continue to make sense. But no, no, telecommute nope. isn't a thing. You got to be near nope. the job. Yep, right. exactly. And it just, it's its all just, it's just a cluster. Yeah, it's a cluster fuck. <laughs> So you can, oh, you can you curse can, on this if you feel like it. You, <laughs> you can feel the curse. Call. You're welcome to curse. You can on curse. It is. It is. It's a cost. It's a clusterfuck. I'm sorry. It is, and it's it's a huge mess. We have. That's why I said I don't really blame the boomers. I don't blame any generation in particular. I blame a government. Yeah. The the only you know what the only thing I blame the boomers for mm-hmm. is not mm-hmm. actually understanding how things yes. have changed before they jump. On millennials, millennials, millennials. Grand slam. Yeah. and it, that's why I said it's not helping anyone. Just the the boomers need to stop attacking the millennials. The millennials need to stop wishing the boomers would just hurry up and die, and that they need to euthanize all of them. <laughs> euthanize all of them so we can have their jobs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we can have their jobs. I'm like that's not that's not gonna, how it's going to work. Okay, right. guys, you that's know, not a strategy. Just, just saying, <laughs> that's not a strategy, guys. We need to work together. We yeah. need to work together to help fix this country because it's not going to um, our government's not going to fix it they're having fun ruining it they're, they're just having, having fun right destroying it extracting right. the last the last of the, the money from the 
Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> you guys realize that our our country is $14 trillion in debt. Can you, can you wrap your head around that amount? Like, <laughs> like, is that still yeah. the moon and back, what, 25 times? That's what yeah, I read. It's once. not. <laughs> it's, we're, we're pretty much owned by China. It's so not a they can collect number. on us every time. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. It, it's, it's insane. So right. we, we have to stop blaming the, the other generations. Yeah. We need to take personal responsibility, which I feel like a lot of people don't do this these days. They blame everybody for everything. Mm-hmm. And it's all about feelings and emotions and not logic and not critical thinking and saying, you know what? Yeah. Maybe selling Sally so-and-so she makes, you know, a six figure sum. Good for her. If I want to get there, I got to work hard and I got to buckle down. And I also have to be okay with the idea that I may never be there. You know, why do we have this sense that we have to be like each other, that we have to be in this elite category where you make a Mm. six figure sum? You know, those people that work make six figure sums, they really never take a break. They don't. A lot of them leave miserable lives. I know millionaires. A lot of them They're always working. Yes. I, I know millennials. They're always working. They're never at home enjoying their home. Mm-hmm. They're yeah. always working to make more money. Right. I'm sorry. I don't want that life. I saw that. I'm like, mm, I'm happy with our, you know, smaller, you know, $70,000 income. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just we we live life. I do That's have, what it's about. I do have sympathy because, um, I you know, I'm in the years now. I'm at 50. I I'm ought to be approaching like my peak earning years or whatever before they put me out yeah. to pasture, assuming I can still <laughs> function, you know. Still, yeah. my eyes are going, my wrists are going, but you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But I do have sympathy for people who are have never had much of a, a sense that they're going to be secured in their career at all. And yeah. I think yeah. you may see that at play when people are working, it seems, obsessively, because they don't have a sense of security, and they right. do feel yep. like they could be lose that progress they've made at any time Anytime. and be back right. to oh, square sure. one. So. And that that's sort of like a desperate fear, you know? It is a yeah. fear. Right. Are they, so yeah. the question the question you have to ask yourself is where do you put your value? Yeah. Well, is your value in your job? Or mm-hmm. is your value in, you know, that you're going to be okay even if you lose? And I think that's where we are. If mm-hmm. we lose everything, we're still going to be okay. We'll figure it out. We'll make it work. But my mm-hmm. a lot of that is because of my faith. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of friends that are atheists, and that's a whole nother topic. Whole other, but, yeah, that's a whole is, other topic. But that's where a lot of the fear I think comes yeah. from. Right. Yeah. Well, no, it, you're living life for the moment. <laughs> well, and, you're not thinking about tomorrow. And you've got some extended family. Is that right? Yeah, I do. That, I have and, a lot of family. Right. Well, that's and, good. Yeah. And that's how shall I say? Um, a lot of people don't. Their parents yes. had two kids. That's so sad. And it's not just about have, the cash value. It's about people you can talk to. People you can talk you know, to. Or, yes. I mean, it doesn't matter that Support. they're wealthy or whatever, but, you know, right. people you can just turn to in a crisis. Exactly. And exactly. so, and, and a lot of yeah. people don't have that. They don't. A lot of yeah. people don't have that. They don't have cousins. Especially they don't when, have, when their families have been scattered all across, across the, the country. country. Right. Like mine yeah. was. Or they're divorced or the, you know, yeah. or they only have one sibling or they're an only child. I really feel for people that are only children. Mm. You know, yeah. I couldn't imagine not having all of my siblings because I'm the oldest, second oldest of seven. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I love my big family. I love that I can just, you know, hang out and have them around. This is something and, we keep telling our kids when we see them fighting and bickering and whatnot. Is No, we're telling them, no, really, one day you're going to be grateful that you have each all each these other. brothers and sisters. They're like, yeah, exactly. right. <laughs> exactly. And that's a lot of the reasons why we know we'd be okay, because I know that I can go crash at my brothers while we get figure out you know, what's going on? What's he next? Owns his own house too. Right. Yeah, exactly. Or mm-hmm. vice versa. If he needed somewhere to crash and, and something happened, he could crash with us. I mean, there was times that he needed to hang out with my parents and we have that capability, mm-hmm. but you know, you have a, a yeah. just broke a lot of broken families. It's a, a different kind of families, safety net. It's a different kind, it of, safety it a different yeah. kind of safety net. And, and we, I think that yeah, also affects yeah. too your success in the future too. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. your feeling of sense of security. No, people um, whose people whose brains are entirely filled up with panic over their debts, their basic needs, their fundamental security in life. You know, having a partner, having a support system, and whatnot. Right. They don't actually yeah. have any space left in their brains to focus on like 
what ought to be their career, you know, that part yes. of, that ought to be developing that career. Right. They just don't have yes. any, there's no processing power left. <laughs> right. And I have to say that my generation is probably one of the most fear-based generations. I mean, I was, I was watching this program, or I watched mm. the 9-11 and it was, yeah. I don't know if you've ever watched the, the full recording of 9 11. Yeah. But <laughs> before it happened, it was very interesting. It was all, you know, everything's happy, everything's great, everything's good. And then 9 11 happens and it's fear, just tons of fear. Like Every raw fear. Any minute we could just blow up and everything's going to, we're going to die, we're going to lose everything. And, you know, you have to, like, it's so much fear in our generation. Mm -hmm. it, it's just, and, yeah, and that hadn't really feeling, occurred to me how much that shaped the millennials because I was already yes. in my 30s. Yeah, no, we were. It did. Yeah, you were in your 30s. I yeah. was in my late 20s. Yeah. And I we, was we saw 13. It. I was 13 when so that happened. it was a formative yeah. event, Yeah, frankly, right? It was. And I mean, think about it. I also was a little kid when Columbine happened. I lived, I, that was like really close to my backyard when yeah, Columbine that's, happened. That's gotta so be now we have, right. our schools aren't secure. Mm -hmm. Um our, our cities aren't land safe. is not secure. I mean, yeah. that was the first attack in what on our on our soil and what like. Well, actually, kind of ever. There, there had been much smaller, smaller yeah. and stuff like that. Was that was a big yeah. attack. That was a big attack that shook yeah. our security as a country. Mm -hmm. And then it's just you know you remember when you used to be able to go on airplanes with whatever you wanted, yeah, oh, and do. like Good security days. took like five seconds. Yeah. I do. Now it's like this, yeah. Now they just like this huge. They just sedate you <laughs> and strap down. you to a board, and yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And so there's this all affects the brain. There's and a generation it, it does. of people. Yeah. That that's yeah. been their experience of that's, flying. That's normal. So you have to that's take their off norm. Your shoes. Yeah. yeah. So I feel oh, like shit. we've been overly coddled <laughs> and overly protected and given this false sense of security, and now we're just like. <laughs> and then, well, then, it's like it's both actually, right? Yeah. Coddled yeah. and given yeah. a false sense of security, and then shoved out into You're a terrified a terror yeah. <laughs> in a terrifying world. Right, yeah, yeah. where the schools aren't and, safe, where your cities aren't safe, yeah. where and, and, and so and the, on. The news media makes it their business. To, well, they make bank to, on to that. Scare you as oh, much as possible. Yeah. They make good fear, money. Yeah, with fear, so. fear. Uh, fear makes money. <laughs> it does. Yeah. So we're and, we're always grateful that we don't actually we watch, don't cable TV. TV. We don't watch cable TV. <laughs> yeah, I don't watch it. I've turned off of it. I yeah. probably am one of the lowest technologically user person in my generation. I. Yeah. You know, I finally got a cell phone at 18. <laughs> so it's just, but the, it does affect the brain. It does affect the mm -hmm. brain. It does affect yeah. my generation. Yeah. And um, I think it's just because when you're in fear, if you know this, I don't know if you know this because I'm, I'm more medically minded, but when you're in constant fear and panic mode, um, mm -hmm. you, the cortisol dumping into your system yeah. ruins your fine motor skills. And it's it, all about it, the cortisol. And it just, yeah. Yep. And it, and it, and it, and it destroys your, ability for critical thinking mm -hmm. planning and all planning that. and yeah. forethinking yeah. and whatnot so so if we're constantly on edge and mm -hmm. constantly panicked and constantly depressed mm -hmm. which i have to say my generation is probably one of the most depressed generations most yeah. anxious generations yeah. yeah and probably most highly medicated generations sure. oh lord um oh, yeah you're not going to make good decisions for the long term you're going to be living in the moment and what is best for now you mm -hmm. know so yeah my i I really feel for my generation. Everybody just needs to pray for my generation. And <laughs> yeah, I don't know well, not, not, whose fault it is. I don't know who to blame. All I know is that my dad told me that there's two types of people in the world. Mm -hmm. People that blame everybody else for their problems and people that take responsibility for their problems. Mm -hmm. He said, which person do you want to be? What do you want to be in that scenario? Well, I'm, and, and I want to be one that takes responsibility because mm -hmm. it's not going to do any good going around blaming everybody for X, Y, and Z. We need to stop it. We just, everybody at the country just needs to stop it. <laughs> well, and how shall I say? Um, oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm not talking into the mic. Pardon me. I do that sometimes. Um, I wonder, though, if things will change without anyone. And because, you know, the government commits lots of crimes against us. Oh, yeah. And if and we step. never hold them responsible, are mm -hmm. they really ever going to change? And that's nope. that's blame that I'd like to assign. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'd like them oh, yeah. to be accountable for what they've done. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So that that's blame I feel is very important. But yes. this sort of like uh, interesting fighting, 
amongst different groups of the populace. Yeah. I just, that's we not going to get us anywhere. We don't have, we really, there's lots I could say about this, but we, you know, I'm standing in front of a banner here we have up on our wall in our little podcast studio, which Grace mm-hmm. and the kids used to carry to protests and marches and whatnot. And it says solidarity forever. Yeah. And we don't have solidarity with each other across classes, across generations, across groups. There's a reason for that. Yeah. There's a reason for that. The government wants to keep us fighting so we don't bind together and, and fight kick them. their butts. Yes. And fight them. Exactly. Right. They don't want us to do that. I mean, they want race wars. They want class wars. They want yeah. feeling wars. That's what they got right now. I right. mean, they don't care. They're just going to throw it and get everybody fighting each other because then they're like, oh, well, we can do whatever we want. We can right. keep spending money. Part Nobody of, notices what we're doing. But <laughs> there, is, there is a sense, though, I wanted to, to, to mention about, uh, you know, there's there is personal responsibility for all for all of these things, and people right. should yep. make good decisions and good plans based on their uh, responsibilities. But also mm-hmm. in terms of things like let's say take the student loans as an example, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if someone yep. their whole life has been sold a bill of goods, you know, yeah. and convinced and believed they were making the responsible choice. This is, this is the responsible thing. It was the responsible choice. At every step of the way, they thought that. Then they find yep. out, you know, oh, I've had to put my loan in deferment twice, and, and now it's doubled ah. or tripled. Mm-hmm. And yep. there's, like, the personal, at some point, the personal responsibility only can take us so far, and we yes. do. It's sort That's of like true. with climate change. We can't, you know, there's only so much I can do to save the climate by not, Yep. Burning carbon, you know, like yep. at, at some point, the larger changes have to be collective. Yep. And that's such yep. any kind of collective thinking has become such a dirty word now, because yes. if we're all kept in this state of individualism and personal responsibility, we're relatively powerless. I mean, we can be guaranteed that we'll you know, do our best to maintain good credit and pay our bills on time and all that. But as far great. as making the larger changes in the power structures and all that that's requires some collective collective work oh well and this is this is this brings me to my i guess my last question here okay um we probably should be winding (laughs) winding up we started late but uh yeah having a good time though (laughs) yeah yeah this is great great conversation um what what could we do to help what would help you in, for our generation to be in, in better solidarity with, with millennials. Right, right. What can we do? Uh, you, you know, know. It's, just, it's just one of those things that somebody's going to have to put the, the, the guns down eventually. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're going to have, we're gonna have to stop fighting each other. And I don't know how we're going to do that because, I mean, I've seen such a climate change here in Colorado in just the last five, six years that everyone's so angry just so angry and i don't i don't know i don't know what's going to help us change ourselves Mm -hmm. um i mean like i said if we keep going around blaming each other for everything you know i'm just waiting for this to blow up and become a really nasty fight or it's gonna just die down and piddle off i don't know i don't know what it's gonna what it's gonna become but it's you can almost feel the tension in the air you can almost cut Mm. it with a knife um around here and it's just i'm terrified sometimes to drive my kids to school because i get road raged at least once or twice a day not yeah. joking people cutting you off or flipping you off oh, yeah flipping all this. the bird getting in my way just because getting i think a lot face, of it's because right. i'm driving a van full of kids um yeah, yeah. It, and, and it, is- it's, ter- it's terrifying it's terrifying right now going out there because it, it is there's just so much anger and everybody's angry at each other and they're angry at the government angry that they can't pay their bills they're angry Ooh, and I'm just like, guys, ooh, we all just chill. I, I figured that legalization of marijuana would make everybody happier, but nobody's happier around here. I mean, come on, people. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Is this like a like kind of a in the air? The air is filled with like libertarian rage in Colorado. Is that what's going? on? I don't on? know. I don't know exactly what it is, but whatever it is, it, it's either going to reach a boiling point and it's going to explode. Or it's going to pedal off and everybody's just going to figure it out. They're going to figure out their situation. And I think a lot of it's because there's so many people here now. Mm-hmm. The it, the interest rates are so high. The house economy is mm-hmm. ridiculous. People can't barely mm-hmm. re- afford rent. It's a mess mm-hmm. here. 
Mm. It's a mess in Colorado. And that was moving to Colorado for, you know, like as recently as 10 or 20 years ago was like, you know, moving to paradise, right? To get away from your urban related yep. problems here right. city, not anymore city, yeah. don't right. d- don't come here everybody that's listening to this podcast <laughs> yeah. do not Colorado's come full. here it is, Colorado's, it, Colorado's it, full it's insane it's insane and and actually right. there's been articles that's coming out that this is one of the least happiest places to move to now wow Oh, we are some of the angriest people now, and I don't know what's going on. But that's all the reasons why my husband and I are like we're going to move away to the country. <laughs> well, we <laughs> see that. So. We see the we're road rage. I, I see the road rage in my commute, yeah. and especially if I had, it's not. It's less bad if I had west, but it's worse if I had east. Yeah. and it's because yeah. in downtown the Detroit area around those communities. Mm. People are more stressed. Their economics are harder. And it is. They're Everybody's stressed. And they're, yeah, and they're stressed. They're actually like ready to hit each other. And we see this. We just saw an accident oh, recently right. that someone caused an accident just because like they were rammed pissed. the guy. Yeah, yeah. rammed a guy. Yeah. It's so sad. It's yeah. just so sad that we're just so angry at our fellow human beings. And we're fighting reality, over you know, really 10 feet in a lane. Yeah. Well, no, we and the fight. Done to each other. They're fighting over ten feet in the lane. Who, who's to go gonna, who's gonna merge one step, one you know, car length faster. ahead in the it lane? It turns into yep. a physical fight. So, wow. And it's it's we've we've At least actually they didn't get shot. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, it's almost like we've dehumanized each other and yeah. we don't know how to interact with each other and we don't see each other as 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 mothers and fathers mm-hmm. and, and sisters and brothers. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what your political stance is, what your religious stance is. It doesn't matter. You have, you have a beating heart. You have feelings. You're a person. Right. One has that lost its value. And that's where I'm trying. Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm mm-hmm. not so worried about economics right now. That that's not going to even fix itself. Mm-hmm. And so we can fix out our personal problems with each other and mm-hmm. get together and learn to just, Coexist again. Coexist. To, to, to appreciate much, people's uh, to appreciate basic humanity. Hmm. Basic humanity that we right. can just. First of all, we can disagree with each other, and no one's going to die. And, <laughs> we shouldn't. <laughs> and that's, that's shouldn't. okay. Yeah. It's okay to disagree. That's sure. a beautiful mm-hmm. thing. We all have different backgrounds. We all have different beliefs, but we should be able to talk so that we can understand where each other's coming from. Mm-hmm. And secondly, that we can still be friends as long as you're not a oh, jerk. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. my only qualification. As long as you're not a jerk. I don't care if you have five heads. I don't care. <laughs> right. I don't care if do, you but, are you know, a lot of black. Heads, I, I mean, yeah. if you came from like the worst background and you're like an ex-convict and you're not a jerk, I can still be friends with you. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. just don't be a jerk. <laughs> All right. I don't I ask for much from friends. Jerk. It's hard. Uh, I find it hard. Yeah, I find it hard to not be a jerk. It is, but that's <laughs> but I do what I can. Yeah. <sighs> But it's right. okay, you know. If you're you're still a jerk and you're able to just say, "Hey, let's throw back a beer and let's hang out." Oh, I'm good for that. I miss yeah. I miss throwing back a beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, come on, <laughs> that that's that's just basic human things. And also, we all all need to learn to laugh more. What happened to senses of humor? Oh yeah, yeah. I try to maintain that on social media these days, but a lot you gotta of people laugh take more a and not yeah. be so serious. Life's short; it's too short to be serious. I, that's just. I really, I do think (laughs) that left or right or politically, wherever you are, if you're Mm -hmm. like an activist type person doing whatnot, it's really easy to forget to do anything fun. Right. Or to make anything fun. It's really easy to make it all so obsessed about the problem solving and the organizing and whatnot that you, you don't, like you said, crack a beer and socialize and have a laugh together or dance, you know, or like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? That's not my revolution. There's no dancing. Because those are the things that brings us together. Mm -hmm. That's the stuff that brings us together as humans. Is our 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 ability to enjoy good food together, to enjoy Mm -hmm. a good laugh, and to go out and go have fun. Whether it's dancing, whether it's just you know going and playing frisbee golf in the park. You know, those are the things that bring people and communities and places together. Honestly, really, food does. Yeah. Food brings Food communities definitely, together. Definitely like does. nothing else. Yeah. 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 I agree. And and this is something we've lost. We've lost this somewhere along oh, the way. Yeah. No, it's like our ability to every be together. organization I'm with it's like a liability issue. They can't serve food. Oh yeah, get together yeah. for a meeting and and they don't. They don't There's have no food. food. It, and and it, it ought to be like a church basement potluck, right? You know? right. But yeah. it's, it's, it's so amen. surreal because yeah. you know, amen. twenty years ago, that's not how we did things. <laughs> right. 
No. Right. And now you have kids that are walking around with their faces in their cell phones. They're isolated yeah. from each other. So it's easy to hate people when you're isolated. You don't have connections. You don't have relationships. Mm. It all goes back to relationships. Mm. You want to know what's wrong with our economy? We don't know how to relate to each other. That's it. There you oh. go. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I think that's a good last note I, right I there. I think that's a good, I think yeah. that is too. We uh, yeah. we really appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk to us tonight. So no, this of is course. awesome. No, it's been good to it's big been, been good to get to know you a little better, Angie. Yeah. yeah, of course. Thank you, Grace, for having me, and thank you. It's Paul, right? Paul. Yeah. Okay. See, aha, I have good memory. All right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much. This was enjoyable. You've been listening to the Grace and Paul Podcast. Check out the show blog at podcast.blogspot.com where you can leave comments or search for the Grace and Paul Podcast on Facebook or YouTube. Thanks, guys. See you next week.